Hello, everybody. David Schuster here on Take Action News. Welcome to our first show of March 2013. So glad to have you with us, along with our executive producer, Daniel Marins, our vice president in charge of board operations, Rich Webster. The big news right now is that the notices are going out to government employees across the country, notices that many of them are going to be furloughed or may lose their jobs or that automatic budget cuts are coming because Congress and the Obama administration could not agree on any sort of deal to avoid the sequester. Here's, though, what you need to know to take action on this story. It's a lie. It is a lie. The premise of the sequester, the premise that we have to somehow cut government spending or raise government revenue through artificial means to somehow balance the budget, to close the budget deficit, that is a lie. And you may be thinking, well, Schuster, what are you talking about? I mean, nobody's really been talking about it. Actually, there have been some people talking about this, including my friend and esteemed uh, Newsweek senior economist uh, editor Daniel Gross. He points out that the, the economy has been doing really well over the last couple of months. Consider this. Rising payroll tax collections, declining unemployment, have produced $86 billion of deficit reduction in the first four months of fiscal year 2013 which is almost exactly the amount the sequester hopes to achieve. In other words, just because the economy is picking up, because the stimulus a couple of years ago started to put the seeds in as, of economic growth, because fewer people are collecting unemployment benefits, because businesses are humming, because Wall Street is picking up, more money is coming to the federal government simply because more money is being made by folks out there who pay taxes. And as a result, the deficit is shrinking not growing. And the whole premise of the sequester, the idea that we absolutely have to cut government spending by 8% in most programs and 12% in the military, that's bunk. We're closing the deficit anyway. And oh, by the way, even Wall Street knows this. If you look at, the, for example, what was happening with the stocks on Wall Street, as, a, as it was very clear on Friday, March the 1st, the first day of March, that Congress and the Obama administration were not going to be able to come up with any sort of agreement, Wall Street essentially shrugged. Stocks continued to rally. The markets were fine. And the fact of the matter is most investors around the world recognize that in an economy that is as large as ours, an $85 billion impact, one way or the other, is really not going to have that much significance. So yes, this will put some of the brakes on our economy. This is not the sort of thing we want to be doing. You don't want to take $85 billion in government spending out of the economy when you're trying to grow an economy. But the fact of the matter is the economy is growing by itself, and it's growing rapidly enough now that the whole premise of the sequester is a bunch of nonsense. And consider this. Consider this. This is the you know, we, we can agree that, yes, in the fourth quarter of 2012, the economy was a little bit soft. But first-time jobless claims are now down. New home sales are up 29% in January over, tw over January a year ago. Durable goods orders are getting better. And oh, by the way, remember those automobile companies that our government bailed out? Well, they're seeing record sales, record profits. The economy is doing fine. Our government is doing better because we are now closing the deficit simply by allowing the economy to grow, to improve. That's what's going to ultimately close the deficit, not some artificial cutting of government spending. And oh, by the way, that those government cuts will fall disproportionately on the poor and the folks who need that government safety net the most. Unbelievable. By the way, President Obama just being, and nobody's really talking about this. And I, you know, I, you know, there's a, there's a political motive for the Obama administration to bash Republicans and say the Republicans are going to send the economy into a ditch. There's a political motive by the Republicans to say, oh my God, we absolutely have to cut government spending or else we're going to run up the credit card to levels that we can't sustain. There's a political motivation on both sides. Uh, and as a result, there's been this nonstop talk, as I've been off the past couple weeks, I've just been astonished about nobody's pointing out, wait a second, the economy's doing just fine. It's doing fine as it is. Just forget the sequester. Repeal it. Don't put the sequester in place. It doesn't matter.